Be it's like, where'd Kish go? Mm, we must, there goes that tree, she's beyond it. But uh, to me, I feel reverse discrimination. Yeah. I do. I feel, and I know you guys, I know you guys love your friend, but Kiana, when you told her to stand up and you did that, can you imagine if you guys were skinny and your friend was bigger and you said, stand up, stand up, stand up, get the booty up there, get the big fat booty up there, when you were like, stand up with the skin and bones, that's still very painful. And I know it's probably hard to understand because society like upholds skinny so much, so you think you can make fun of it because they, they uphold it so much, but it is very, very painful, especially with her trying to gain weight. And, 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 and it's almost like the role models have flopped. She looks at you guys as, you know, like, this is, the, this is what beauty is and this is, because you guys are gorgeous, beautiful women, but she's looking at you as being better and more than and her not being enough. So whenever you say that, you're, in, you're just beating that in her head. Do you understand that? We understand. You understand? Yeah, it's, we understand, but it's like, we all have our own jokes, you know, like we'll come at Keisha like, oh, you're skinny, you're mini, you're tiny. And she'll be like, oh, you're big, you're this, you're that. And we'll be like, well, maybe we'll give you some of our big meat. And you'll be like us. And it's like, you know. Yeah. Well, that's cute. <laughs> but does it, I think it might get a little further than that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's cute. There's nothing wrong with friends doing that type of stuff going back and forth. But I think, I, I think we just, you know, shed a light that a little, it might be a little hurtful, you know, to just think about it. Y'all can still have fun. All yeah. right? I'll be right back. Yeah. Up next. Erin struggles with food and weight get more intense when she goes to sleep because she is a sleep eater. The only reason that I know I do it is because I found chocolate smears on my pillow. Really? <laughs>
put down because of their weight. And Erin struggles with food and weight get more intense when she goes to sleep because she is a sleep eater. So, Erin, how long have you been a sleep eater? I've been a sleep eater for about six or seven years. And I've tried to control it. Nothing works at all. So what happens? In the middle of the night, you're asleep. About what, about what time Between do you wake up? Between 2 and 4 a.m. Between 2 and 4 a.m., you yeah. wake, well, not wake up. You get up. I get out of bed. Still sleep. Go straight for the fridge, look for anything. If I have any candy bars in my room, I'll just start eating them. And in the morning, do you remember? No. The only reason that I know I do it is because I found chocolate smears on my pillow. Really? <laughs> candy wrappers in my bed, crumbs on the kitchen floor. OK. And um, I know one time you had a doctor's appointment where you, you couldn't eat for a certain, like after midnight or whatever. Exactly. You're not supposed to eat like a checkup or a, a test. I don't know, I've, I've had that before. <laughs> you, you have to fast after midnight. Yeah. And so tell me what happened. Well, I knew I wasn't supposed to eat, and I knew I had chocolate in the house. So I asked my grandfather if he would hide everything for me. And I stayed in my room while he hid everything so I wouldn't know where anything was. And lo and behold, 2 a.m. in the morning, I woke up, went into the kitchen, and I was very upset that I couldn't find anything. I was banging cabinets. People told you you were banging yes. cabinets. OK. And have you gained weight from being like a sleep eater? I've gained about 10 pounds over time. Uh -huh. I am very worried about my future because I'm young now, so mm -hmm. I can keep the weight off. Mm -hmm. But what happens when I'm 30? When you're older. Yeah. OK, well, your best friend Eliza is here. Come on out, Eliza. So, Eliza, she was talking about when, when she couldn't find the food, she was banging cabinets. Now, I know you <laughs> got woken up in the middle of the night once at her house yes, hearing banging. I have, yes. Tell me yes. about that. Um, I woke up, it was uh, probably around 1.30. And because um, I heard banging, I didn't know where it was coming from. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like, what is that? Because it woke me up. And I looked over and she wasn't in the other bed. So I get up and she's banging cabinets in the kitchen. Like she's mumbling to herself. She starts yelling at me. I was really scared. I was like, oh my God, I'm like, what's going on? But and what was she mumbling? Something about cookies and <laughs> the last, the last ice cream Mumbling something about sandwich. cookies. And then I heard she yeah. cursed you out. Mm -hmm. She was very, she very She cursed mad you at out. Now, you told me that you said that she looked like a robot? It was like, it was like mechanical. Like she was sitting uh -huh. there, it's like she wasn't tasting it. Like if you're sitting, like you're eating a cookie and you're enjoying it or whatever, she was like just chewing and just shoveling. shoveling and, yeah. and tell me how it makes you feel when you, you know she does this, you saw it, is it scary? Um, it, it really freaks me out when I first saw it. It, um, cause I didn't know what was going on and I'd never heard of anybody doing anything like this. So I don't know, I guess it just, um, because I think it's like something, I think it's like her comfort blanket, and I think there's a reason why she does it, so. Okay. And w what are your biggest fears with this, Erin? I'm actually scared that one day I will begin to gain weight, mm -hmm. and I won't be able to control it. I would really like to stop. Do you think there's a fear that she can be sleeping and get in the car and start the motor and yes. still be asleep? And because the food is not in the cabinet, so you're going to go get it. I and might sleep go and to drive. the supermarket and get some. Okay, your your mom is with us. Stand on up. Hi. Hi. It's Ira. Hi. So, how did how did this start with your daughter? How old was she when she started doing the sleep eating? It's been. Uh... It's been about seven years, as far as I can remember. Okay. I did it for many years myself, really? and I still struggle with it. And um, do you remember doing it when you wake up? Evidence, like she said, there is some chocolate on the pillows. I do yeah. find, you know, Pop-Tart wrappers, Hershey Kisses. If you have Halloween candy somewhere, you do not want me sleeping over your house. Really? So you? Yeah. <laughs> so it's the sugar that you go after. Yeah, it, it's um, or if there's no candy or um, sweet cereal, I'll put a peanut butter and jelly t sandwich together. You'll make a sandwich. A peanut butter and jelly sandwich in particular. Yeah. With a knife, and you're sleeping. With the knife, and I'm sleeping. There's jelly on the counter wow. when I get up in the morning. Yeah. Is it a stress thing, do you think, Erin, for you? It could very possibly be. I'm a full-time student. I work full-time. I have a very busy life, so it might be comforting to me. Jackie, what do you think this is? You know, I mean, I'm not a psychologist, but I have weighed 320 pounds, and I've definitely been back and forth, you know, mm -hmm. Tyra. <laughs> but um, you know what I honestly think about this is I think that you are stress-eating, and I think you're literally 
eating your feelings. And honestly, I'm just sad for you that you're not enjoying it because food is so yummy and fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I think if you're going to be eating and not enjoying it, here's where broccoli comes into play. You know, <laughs> just keep broccoli and rice cakes in your house. You'll stop sleeping You'll with stop that. You'll stop sleeping. That's All right. right. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> The Tyra Show website got a makeover. There's new features for beauty and fashions and web-exclusive clips you will not see on the show. Aren't you super cool? You came to the website. Go to TyraShow.com now. to the audience, why do, we, do, why do any of you think that in soci society it's okay to be mean to people that are overweight? Why do you think that is? Like, you can't say any race jokes anymore, you know, and, and now the whole gay population is protecting themselves from that, so you can't really say that anymore. Can't really say, oh, things about women, you know what I'm saying? We have women's rights. Why do you think it's okay for us to say things about, gay, uh, about um, people that are overweight? Come on over. I'll meet you in the middle. What's your name? Jillian. Jillian, what do you think? I think it's okay because um, weight is something you can change on yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't change your race, unless you're Michael Jackson. <laughs> but <laughs> you, you can't change your gender. Well, you can, but it's like... Yeah, it's not the easiest. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. I think it's because you can change it. So people just like, well, if you, well, you don't necessarily have to be fat, mm -hmm. so I'm going to make fun of you. Okay. Yeah. Jackie, you stand on up, lady. <laughs> I know that you have a very clear idea about um, Hollywood and the entertainment industry and how they see weight. 
Talk about that. Well, you know this better than anybody. In Hollywood, you pretty much, you know, you can do anything. You can be a drug addict. You can sell drugs. You can maybe have killed your own wife. Mm -hmm. But God forbid you gain three pounds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because now it's a national emergency. Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> oh my God, Ava Longoria had lunch. Stop, yes. right? <laughs> And God forbid somebody have a baby bump, oh, every single tabloid in this country goes crazy. And, you know, what we've seen today, and it's, again, kudos to you for bringing up this topic, because fat people, it really is the new discrimination. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who is a 300-pound fat girl inside, let me tell you something. We hear your little comments. We see the eye rolling. We hear the teeth smacking. And you may not be fat but you have no right to treat people who are any way other than the way that you would want to be treated. And I mean, you do shows about this all the time. It's not enough for us to tell people, like, love yourself, love yourself. Mm -hmm. We're being bombarded with this stuff. I mean, I started as a stand-up comic, Tyra, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I actually stopped doing stand-up because, not because I didn't have a great time or love being a stand-up comic, but because I I would not allow myself to be in clubs and listen to every other comic get